Today I'm reading some photography horror stories. Have you been asked to shoot something for free in exchange for an Instagram tag? Keep watching. <laughs> I'm like, then you might relate to this. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Here we go. And this account was deleted, so don't know what happened there. I was flying to Jamaica out of JFK back in February. Wife and I get into the hotel about 1 a.m. Have to be at JFK to fly by 5 a.m. Do not travel tired. Anyway, we take the train from the parking area to JFK. We miss our check-in for the first flight by five minutes, but get rescheduled to take off hours later. We're killing time walking around JFK and then proceed to security to get on our rescheduled flight. As I'm loading my bag for TSA, I realize my camera isn't in there. Uh-oh. If you are in the situation where you're gonna miss your flight, and you forgot your camera, what would you do? That's a very that's a very interesting question. Vote in the comments, what would you do? Would you miss your flight to go back to get your camera? I wanna say it, I wanna say that I would go back and get the camera. I'm freaking out. I call the hotel to have them check the room, nothing. So we hop on the train back to the parking area about 15 minutes that felt like hours. And fortunately, my camera was in my car, sitting right on the seat in JFK's parking area. Super safe. Had we not missed the first flight, I would have flown to Jamaica, a trip we had dreamed of, without my camera. So had he not missed his first flight, he would have left his camera in his car and gone to Jamaica with just his memories. Okay, so then it's, it's a good thing that you missed your... Okay, so it's a good thing. We're grateful for the, that we missed the first flight. That's what I'm getting from this. In Australia, I was shooting at a location without an assistant. When we get ready, literally me every photo shoot. No assistant, it's <laughs> just me. It's just me and the model. When we get ready to leave, the photo editor and producer help me put the gear in the truck on, on the rental car. Get to the second location, I start unpacking, no camera bag. I just get in the car with the producer and drive 30 minutes back to the first location. The bag was still there on the ground. How are people leaving their, what? Oh my God. <laughs> I would, listen, I'm not going anywhere unless I visually see my camera bag. They left it on the ground. He, they are lucky that they drove 30 minutes and they, it was still there. In America, you know, it's gone. It's gone. Buy, set up the credit card payment because you're buying a new camera at that point. Different shoe also in Australia. Come back to the hotel after dinner. $20,000 worth of equipment gone. I got looted. Camera, lights, passport, everything. Had to rent equipment from a spot two hours away. After the shoot wrapped, I had to fly to Sydney to get a replacement passport. Hands down the worst feeling ever. I'm pretty sure the maid tipped off the thieves. The thieves came in through the, the, my second floor balcony sliding glass door. Who are, like, who is this James Bond? They're over there. How, but yeah, how would they know that he that this person has camera gear? I was in the middle of the floor and there was no easy access to the balcony. I looked around the property and reasoned that the shits jumped the cinder block wall, went to the third floor and dropped down to a second floor balcony. Then they walked along the balcony and passed three to four rooms to get to mine. The room had a locked mesh sliding door over the glass door. The effers took a screwdriver and pushed it through the gate and popped the glass door, then grabbed the bottom of the gate and pulled it off the track and slid it underneath. They grabbed my shit and walked out the door. The maid had to have been involved. Up until that point, I hadn't had my gear out. That is so interesting. So yeah, how, why, the thing is, why would these people go through these lengths to get this gear if they didn't know what was there? Like they had to have known. They're not gonna, do a whole ninja sequence to get to this guy's balcony to break into the room if they didn't know for sure what was in there. They're not gonna go in there like, oh, let's take a chance. Let's do a surprise visit. Maybe we'll find something good. Like, no, they had to have known. That is scary because then if you're in a hotel with camera gear, do you hide your gear from the maids now? Like, are they gonna tip people off? Also, with the difficulty it took to get to my room, as well as, as well as the thieves passing up several other rooms, the thieves knew there were valuable objects in the room. The thieves who did like a whole FBI mission to go and steal all the camera gear, like, just get a job, dude. You're gonna, okay, you're gonna steal the gear, then what? Are you gonna start, are you gonna become a photographer? What's going on here? Are you starting a business? Do you know how to use a flash do you know how to adjust the iso i'm just asking 
just asking. Like, do you have an interest? You're breaking into this guy's room, taking all his gear. I mean, it's heavy though. You're gonna, and like the tripods and the, the soft boxes. Like, do you even know how to set those up? Have you ever tried folding a collapsible reflector? I'm just, I just wanna know. So the thieves, what if you don't even like the camera brand that like, maybe, maybe you have a preference. Like maybe you want a Nikon. Maybe you want Sony. Maybe it's a Canon. You know, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. There was this one wedding I shot once. I don't usually shoot weddings. I learned my lesson a long time ago, but it was my sister's best friend, so I did them a solid. I arrived at the restaurant where the ceremony was. I wanted to get there early so I could set up some slaves. It was really dark. An uncle was supposed to accompany me to the location, but of course he ditched me. I spent an hour walking around the neighborhood with 50 pounds of gear on my back until someone answered their phone and I found the location. Wait, but why? See, this is why you meet with the clients before and you know where the location is going to be. That's what I like. I know where every location is, which what each address is for each place at what time. So that's why I would say meet up beforehand before the wedding to do like a little rundown, like 11 o'clock a.m. You'll be here 12 o'clock. You'll be here. You need to get to the couple session by this time. So that just keeps it organized and so you don't run into an issue like this. Of course, with five minutes before the bride walked down the aisle, I arrived to discover the ceremony was taking place in front of a giant effing mirror. So flashes weren't an option. I mostly used my 51.4 and when I did use a flash, I had to spend hours photoshopping it and myself out of the final prints and the damn reflection in the mirror. Who gets mirrored in front of a giant mirror? Honestly, that yikes because like what you have to kind of maneuver yourself to not be in the shot but if it's a giant mirror it's a little tricky you know maybe and then again this is something that could have been talked through before you arrive at the location like had you had you had this meeting with your clients you could you would know beforehand okay it's gonna be in a giant mirror not in a giant mirror you know it's not Alice in Wonderland it's gonna be with a giant mirror. So I have to maneuver myself. I can't use a flash, I can't do this. So then you would be prepared. But again, going into a wedding day, not knowing where locations are or where you're supposed to meet a timeline, it's dangerous, it's risky. I wouldn't do it. Shooting formals at a wedding near the end, the groom's semi-estranged sister comes in for her shot and just stands there. I walk up to her and politely tell her to put her hands a certain way to look better. She yells at me, no one poses me, no one, and proceeds to twist into a distorted Lady Gaga type pose. The groom looked so embarrassed and quietly said, sorry. I looked at the pictures the next day on the computer and noticed the sister had flipped me off in the photos, had to crop those ones tight. What a be, what a be nice person. <laughs> okay, sounds like someone was having a bad day particularly bad day on a wedding that's supposed to be the happiest day of someone else's life yeah um don't take it personal if you notice someone's kind of being rude to you or giving you a hard time talk to another family member that you know is close to them and have them approach that person and not you i love how like he specifies lady gaga type position <laughs> i mean she's a fan right Maybe she's inspired. Maybe she's like, this is the day that I will model. I love how he's being honest here. He's like, I had to crop those ones tight. She was out of there. She was technically not there. <laughs> According to these pictures, historically, she's no longer available in this wedding. Was at my parents and they decided to hire a friend to shoot a family portrait. I brought all my camera gear just in case it was a good day and I could snag a few myself since we were together. The photographer showed up and took us to this nice indoor location. She then pulled out a tiny point and shoot and my jaw dropped. I asked if she wanted to use my camera, flash, etc. And she said, nope, I can get good enough ones with this. She then proceeded to take the darkest photos with the most horrible light I have ever seen. Then the parents got up and left and didn't even ask if I wanted to take some also. I assume she will try and correct everything in Photoshop. Why would a photographer turn up at an indoor portrait shoot with no extra lighting and a point and shoot? My question is, is she being paid? And that will tell you all you need to know. Because I would imagine that someone who's not being paid to photograph something, like if, if it's just like a favor for like an uncle or a cousin or something, like you're probably not gonna put that much effort. You're probably gonna wanna do the, like the minimum amount 
possible, like the lowest effort possible. You know, it's like, why are you gonna go through the hassle of setting up the C stands, bringing the soft boxes, the bringing in the reflect, trying to hold the reflector? Why? Why would that? Why would you do that if you're not being paid? You know, if it's just something. Like, I mean, yeah, bring out the, pull out the iPhone, start taking pictures. But the fact, I mean, I think this whole situation is funny because this person had like their own. They brought camera gear. And then the photographer insisted on using a point and shoot. It could be pride. It could be like, maybe she's really out there trying to sabotage your family pictures. She's like, no, I want this to be low quality. I want this to be extremely grainy for no reason. We don't know. Maybe you, you stole her, her lunch money back in high school. We don't know the villain origin story of this photographer. Who's to say? When I first started shooting weddings, I sold my vehicle to buy equipment and therefore I had to rely on cabs for my first few jobs. During this time, a groom insisted on picking me up before the wedding rather than having me take a cab. I tried to say I'd rather just take a cab, but he refused to take no for an answer. I should also mention that they did not want me there for preparation photos, so I was scheduled to arrive right before the ceremony. 15 minutes after the time he said he would pick me up, I decided to call and see what the holdup was. As it turns out, he had completely forgotten about getting me. I called a cab, which came as fast as it could. However, by the time I finally got to the venue, I was already 20 minutes late. Definitely not your fault. What's worse is that they had waited for me to show up before they started. So I got a lot of dirty looks when I walked in. I mean, it's literally, but it's literally their fault. Did the groom not think to, to say, hey guys, it's actually my fault. He's probably gonna like walk around like this. Like, oh, I had nothing to do with this. Why did he came late, you guys? I wonder why, I have no idea why this man showed up 20 minutes late. He, pro I, he prolonged the ceremony. I couldn't marry the love of my life for an extra 20 minutes. I'm devastated. It's like, you're the one who offered the ride to him. I learned my lesson, however, and now insist that both I and my second shooters have our own vehicles at every job. Why the groom wouldn't just own up to it, to everyone, boggles my mind. Like, you're really gonna pin, pin the blame on the person you're hiring to take your wedding pictures? Come on now. He's gonna get the pictures back like all of them are out of focus. Did he not wanna mention to his entire family that, hey, I kinda offered him a ride? Yeah. You might wanna like get a time machine, go back and, and mention that. The groom's like, today's my wedding. I can't take responsibility for anything. Unfortunately, it's just one of those days. You know what's interesting? None of these people have horror stories about websites. Well, I don't know about them, but I use today's sponsor, Squarespace, to make my website. That's how you know I'm not gonna have any nightmares where I don't have a website or my website is not working and I, someone's asking me, what's your website? I come prepared, you guys. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for you to run your business online, build your brand. I absolutely love what they offer and that's why I would recommend it to you guys. Whether you're a professional photographer or not, maybe you're just someone who has an idea for a business or a brand and you need a place to create your vision. You wanna have a website, but maybe you're just intimidated because it's, it's just so much work that goes into creating a website. I know how that feels. Trust me, Squarespace is so easy to use. You'll actually have fun creating a website, updating it, customizing it. They have so many cool features. They have image galleries. You can customize how your photos appear on your website, how large they appear, where they are. You can drag and drop and change everything and see it live updating. It's actually fun to, to update and you feel like you have a, you have something to show people when they ask you, hey, what type of work do you do? Like, what's your brand? You can have this beautiful looking website that's easy to make, easy to maintain, they have designer templates, so if you don't want to ever change it up, it's super easy. You can just, with a click of a button, you can change your entire template, change your pure website. So it's just, the, my whole thing is it's easy to use. And they have so many amazing features. You can go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Jessica. Use my offer code Jessica for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. All the information will be in the description. Went to shoot a hockey match with my 40D strap with a bit of slack on my left shoulder. The crowd was huge. At the ticket gates, I am asked for the tickets and I bend a little to my left and the strap flicks off the shoulder and my camera lands with a thud on the pavement and it won't even turn on after that. 
And to add to that, I enter the first gate with a broken camera and enduring huge queues only to be told that cameras are not allowed and I have to keep that in my car. No. All of this for nothing. I haggle with them somehow showing them that it is a broken camera. Anyways, I still enjoyed the game and the camera got fixed at a considerable cost, but it's not the same again. I love how this person basically haggled the fact that their camera's not broken. They're like, you know what? Completely broken. Doesn't even turn on. The lens is cracked. Everything's broken. You might as well let me in. Don't you feel bad for me? Like, that's what I would do. I'd be like, listen, I'm having a rough day. It's, can't, it's not even turning on. You know, I don't even... I stopped doing photography. Yeah, two minutes ago. Camera fell. Just let me... I want to just watch the game. It's the least that you could do. <laughs> that's all I got for you guys today. About other people. Literally, they're not even my stories. I'm like, that's all I got from other people. <laughs> I don't know. Why do I say the things that I do? Anyways, that's the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.